All right, so today we are looking at uh, Kirchhoff's rules, which are which um, what is what we use to analyze more complicated circuits or comp circuits that have more than one branch in it, more than one loop. Um, and let me show you the objectives for that, which is C.2.C.1 and 2. Um, so that's here. That would be these ones here, right? And we did do the, the D first with voltmeters and ammeters last time, but this is the, the C. Uh, students should be able to apply Ohm's law and Kirchhoff's rules. Uh, well, there's two H's in Kirchhoff, I didn't realize. Um, to direct current circuits so that you can determine the unknown current voltage or resistance. Um, and you'll be able to set up and solve simultaneous equations, right? That's like having two equations and two unknowns or three equations and three unknowns um, to determine two unknown currents. Um, so there you go. There's always gonna be a Kirchhoff rule thing on the AP test. I love Kirchhoff's rules. Uh, so let's see, what are they? Two rules, there's only two rules. The first one is, well, yeah, useful. When, what we use them for is analyzing circuits that have more than one loop. First is the, is the junction rule, right? And a junction is when, you know, two things, two, two or more branches come, come together, right? And the idea with the, the, the junction rule says that the, the sum over at, at, uh, any junction an intersection, right, in a circuit, um, the sum of all the currents going into and out of that, that junction is zero. Right. So that means, uh, and, and this is because of, you know, this is basically because charge is conserved. All right, so let's say I have a, you know, a junction might look something like this. Um, here's part of a circuit. Um, right, and it, we might have a circuit that branches off, right? And you might have, you know, a current coming in out in this way, a current coming that way, um, and a current coming coming that way, right? And the idea is that um, the the currents coming into any junction have to add up to zero. So the amount coming com so this is the junction here, right? This current I1 comes into the junction. I2 and I3 are coming away from the junction. Right? So I1 minus I2 minus I3 have to be equal to zero. Right? All it says is that the, if you add up the current I2 and I3 here in these two branches, it has to equal the current from this branch. So all we're saying is that charge is conserved here. The current, the current uh, the total current in the junction has to add up to zero. Right. And, and we're gonna be doing an example with this in a moment, but, but does that make sense? Are there any questions about the junction rule? Pretty sure I've read about that last night. Okay, uh, the other rule, Right, that's the first one. The junction rule, if you look at any junction, the current's going in, basically one, another way to think of it is current going into a junction equals current going out of a junction. Maybe, maybe a more intuitive way to think of it. We also have the loop rule, right? And that means if you pick any loop in the circuit, any closed loop, you take whatever path you want. It's a weird looking signal, but any closed loop, The change in potential as you go around the loop, right? And you have to, you know, if you go around the loop, you end up back where you started, right? And you know that the potential at a point is the potential of that point. So if you go around the loop, all your delta Vs have to add up to zero by the time you get back to where you started. That way, the potential where you the potential where you start is the same um, when you end up there. And that's really just because energy is conserved. So these rules come from conservation of charge and conservation of energy. 
right? Con conservation of charge means that whatever current goes into a junction or an intersection, same amount of current has to come out of it. And energy is conserved because if you go around any loop, you know, here's a, you know, if we have, it's basically, you know, in the simplest form, you know, if I have a 10 volt battery here and some resistor, right? I know that I have a positive 10 volts going from this point, you know, I increase, if I go from this point to this point, I increase by 10 volts. So that means when I go through this resistor going from here to here, I decrease potentially by 10 volts, right? So you have 10 positive 10 plus negative 10 equals zero. In, in the simplest form, but it's true for any loop. All right, there's there's simple rules um, to remember and to use. Um, where the the tricky thing comes in kind of in um, you know in setting up the the simultaneous equations correctly. But if but if you kind of uh, do it in a in an organized manner, um, it's really not too bad. Uh, any questions so far? Anything not make sense? Okay. So uh, a couple notes about using these before we do our example. All right, it's important when to have your circuit drawn, you wanna give clear labels um, to every unknown current and, and, uh, and potential, potential drop. So like I1, I2, um, and with an arrow, um, with, the, with an arrow used, um, indicating the direction. Uh, so basically, and you can pick whatever direction you want for the current, you might be wrong. In that case, your current comes out negative and you, and you just switch the, the direction. Right. Um, and we'll see that when we, when we do our example. Um, so after you do that, you use the rules, you write an equation for, for every loop and junction in the circuit. And you might not need to do every single one because sometimes you'll get the same equation for two, for two, from two different loops. Um, but start out by trying to write an equation for every loop and junction in the circuit. And then once you notice that the number of equations is bigger than the number of your unknowns, well, now you've got enough equations and you can go ahead and solve. Does that sound okay? So now why don't we take a look at, um, at this circuit. So we've got a circuit here and this is the same one that is in your textbook in section 28.3 about Kirchhoff's rules that they, that they use as an, as an example. Um, so if, uh, if you need to see this again, um, you, you, can, you, can, you can see how they do it in, in the book. All right, but the idea, this is our circuit, right? And we've got two different batteries in this circuit and three different resistors in this circuit. All right, we've got a 14 volt battery here, the positive terminal here, the negative terminal is there. Uh, there's a resistor here. There's a battery here with the negative terminal on this side. This is a 10 volt battery. Um, there's a six ohm resistor here, and then there's a two ohm resistor there, right? And we're gonna figure out what all the, you know, any or all different currents in this circuit are. How many different, how many different currents are there going to be in this circuit? Do you think? It's kind of the first thing. Before, before, right, we need to give clear labels to each unknown current. Right, so we know all the. In this case, we know all the resistors. We know all the, the potentials for the battery. So, so what, we're, what we're missing, what we don't know is the currents in this circuit. How many different currents do you think they're gonna be? I feel like four. Four? Where, yeah, so where would... Um... Well, the first one would be um, on the... On the positive end of the first battery on the 14 volt battery. Okay. Um, so when we're talking about a current flow, right? Any kind of single branch is gonna have its own current, right? So as long as there's no intersections or no junction, 
right? The current's going to be the same. So basically, if you're, you're talking about this here, right? This whole piece from this branch to this branch to 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 here. Let me draw. Let me call this um, call this point A here and point B. If I go from point A to point B around here, right? There's no branch. There's no this current all has to be the same, right? Because uh, there's nowhere else for it to go. Once I get to point B, now the, now here and here, the current might be different, right? Because some of the current that comes into point B here is gonna go this way, some of the current can go this way, right? But, but the first current, I'll call this I1, um, let me call this, I wanna use the same, I wanna label it the same. Um, as in the book. So I'm going to call this one I2, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I1 or I2 um, is like here. So, so, so what does that battery do over there, that, that 10 volt battery? It provides a potential difference. Well, we already have one from the first battery. Right. Yeah. So there's a, so, so this point here is 14, 14 volts higher than this point here. Right. And this point here is 10 volts higher than this point here. But, but these two points, right, you, you, there's no um, direct line between the two, right, going through the ideal wire. So we don't necessarily know that this potential, this point here is the same as this point because we have to go through a resistor, right? And there's going to be a potential drop across the resistor. Um, so, yeah, so, so it's, hard, it's really hard to kind of visualize which way the current's flowing sometimes when you have the two... Um, Two, two batteries and they're not, they're not facing the same way. They're not in the same branch. That's why we need these rules, right? Because it is hard to visualize and it's hard to figure out. But if we kind of blindly follow the junction rule and the loop rule, um, we'll, we'll, we'll get it. All right. So basically this here, right? Going from point A up here through point B, that, that we're calling current two. And we're picking as a direction, or I just picked as a direction because I drew the arrow this way, going this way. Right now, it may work out because of how the circuit's built, or how you know because of the circuit that the current's actually flowing this way. In which case, we'd get a negative value for I two, and then we would just switch the direction. Uh, the other current, right? There, let's see where the other the other currents. I just want to label all my unknown currents. There's also this branch here from point eight from point A to point B going this way. Right. This is going to have its own current. It's not necessarily going to be the same as, as this one, I2. Uh, this one we'll call I1, just, just to uh, be consistent with Sir Wayne Jewett. So I1 is going from point A to point B through this 10 volt battery. And then if we're looking at point B in particular, right? If we've got I1 coming in here, I2 coming in here, um, the last, the final current, which we'll call I3, is coming out, coming out here. And we'll, we'll guess or assume that it's going in this direction. Again, pick a direction for your currents and make sure you do pick a direction and label it because it's going to matter. Um, but if you pick the wrong direction, that's fine. It just means your current comes out negative and you can change it. But you see how there's only three different currents, right? There's no other branches in the circuit that would have any different current than, than either I1, which goes from here to here, I2, which goes around like this way, and I3, which goes around like that. And that's kind of a key point because if you could, you got to be able to, to, um, to identify the different, uh, where, where the currents are going to be different. Is there, is there questions about that? Does anybody think there might be more aren't sure why, why there isn't more current somewhere else or why, why two of these aren't identical. Does this make sense so far? Okay. So we've done kind of that first thing. We've given clear labels, right? We've given clear labels to each unknown current and potential drop, right? We don't have any, um, Well, we do have unknown potential drops, um, but let's. Uh, let's put those in when we when we do our loop rules. We don't have any unknown resistors and unknown, or unknown batteries. 
So next we want to use the rules and we'll write an equation for every loop and every junction in the circuit. All right. So here's what here's what we mean by that. Um, let's take a look at, at this junction here. Can anybody make an educated guess as to what equation I'm going to get from applying the junction rule to this junction? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write for junction B, I'll call it junction B, right? Because that's point B. Which, which, uh, which currents are going into junction B as opposed to coming out of junction B, the way I've drawn it? That would be, that would be a current one. Current one's going into, yep. And it would split into, would that be right? Um, yeah, well, yeah, it does split into two, but look, the way I've drawn it is that current two, the arrow is pointing also into the junction, right? Oh, I see. So both, I see both junk, uh, both card one and card two going to be. Yeah, one and two are going into the junction, right? So I write those basically as positive, right? Because current's coming into it. How do you? How am I going to continue writing this equation? I remember, I'll go back. This is my this is my junction. Oh, uh, wouldn't we be adding uh, card one and card two? That's what I've got so far, but that's not that there's another current that's that's uh, at this junction, right? What about this branch here? Uh, it would equal to current three. It would. It would equal to current three. Yeah. So I would I can say I one plus I two equals current three um, equals I three. Exactly. I'm going to I'm going to do it this way and say, which is the exact same thing. Uh, current three is coming out, right? The way I've drawn the arrow. Current three is coming out of the junction. So I would say I1 plus I2 minus I3 equals zero. All right, which is exactly the same as saying I1 plus I2 equals I3. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. I'll even write, write it that way as well. That's the, I think that's the easier way to think about it. It's just that when we go ahead and, and solve these equations, um, it's often better to have it in, in this form, but it's easy to go back and forth. But saying I1 plus I2 equals I3 makes sense, right? We've got some current coming into the junction here from this branch. We've got some current coming into the junction here from this branch. So it's all got to come out in this branch. I hope that makes sense. And we'd have a slightly different equation if we had drawn the I3 or we, if we had drawn, you know, one of the arrows in the other direction, but that's okay. We'd get a, we'd get a negative answer for our current instead, and then we would just switch the arrow. Are we okay with that? So now I would do the same thing for this other junction here. Right, but I'm I noticed that this is kind of the same exact thing, right? The only thing if I do, well, I'll write it out. Um, if I look at junction A, right now in a junction A, I three is going into it. Right? Do you see that? I three is coming into it here, and then I one is coming out of it. Or sorry. This two looks like a one. A... I one is coming out of junction A and I two is coming out of junction A. So what I get when I look at junction A is I three minus I one minus I two equals zero, right? Which is the same as saying I three equals I one plus I two. So in this case, junction A and junction B both give us the exact same equation. Right. So, and if you can see that, because it's the same, the same currents are going into junction A and junction B. If you can see that, you don't need to do both equations. Right. This is this doesn't give us a separate equation. So, so uh, we don't really need this one. And there's no other junctions in this circuit. So this is the only equation we get from from the junction rule. 
How many unknowns are there in this equation? Three. Three, right? So I'm going to need two more equations before I can solve this. Okay. And that's okay. I'm, where, where do you suppose I'm going to get my two more equations? No, the potential difference. The potential difference, right? That yeah, well, yeah, the, the loop, the loop rule, right? Which is about the potential difference. All right. So let's see how we apply the loop rule around uh, around two of these loops. Let's see. Now we we can pick. Um, now it looks like there's actually three possible loops I can choose, right? I'm, and I'm only going to need two of them. Right, the three loops I could choose are the big outside loop, right? That's a loop. There's the there's the upper loop, and then there's the there's the lower loop. Right? Why don't we start with with the big outside loop? And we'll we'll do two of them, and if we've got enough, you know, if we've got enough unknowns, um, we won't need to do the third. Right, so let's start with the big outside loop. I'll call it, uh, why don't we name it outside loop? Uh, okay. So what I want to do, so what, what the loop rule says is if I go around the loop and add up all the potential differences, I'm going to get zero. So let's see. Why don't I start? Um, why don't I start here where, where the battery is? In the outside loop, there's only that, there's only that one battery. All right. What's my potential difference if I go from a positive, from this positive terminal here to this positive terminal there? Um, what's what's my potential difference going to be? Between here and here. Negative 14. Negative 14 volts, right, exactly. So, and you can go around the, the loop in either direction, but, but we're choosing to go around in this direction. It, it's a little bit easier if you match the, the currents, you get, I think, fewer minus signs. So I get negative 14 volts from the battery, right? And I go around until I find another, you know, until there's some other potential drop and there's gonna be a drop over this resistor. Going from here to here, Right. How am I going to know what, what the potential drop is from here to here? I know this is a two ohm resistor and I know I have current I3 flowing through it. Uh, you would, oops, shoot, I forgot the equation. You would uh, multiply the resistance by uh, I3. Yeah. The potential difference there is going to be the, the resistance um, times I3, right? And is that going to be, wait, is that going to be positive or negative? Yeah. So since we're going in the direction of the current, right, we're going to say plus, you know, basically two ohms times I3 is this potential difference from here to here. Right. And it might be a positive, it might be an increase in potential going from here to here. In fact, if we've got the current drawn in the right direction, it is an increase in potential. Um, and that, and that's, that's good because we had a negative drop over here, right? We, we're climbing back up to 14 volts now going around the loop, right? Uh, so I've got 14 volts plus two times I3. And I'm going to, I'm going to, after I write it, I'll write it again without the, without the units. Um, not that that's a, always a great thing to do, but it, it's easier to, it's easier now to, um, that'll make it easier to visualize uh, or easier to see and solve the equation. Oh, I'm sorry that you can't see my loop equation. Sorry. All right, so now I've gone from here to here and then I can continue around my loop and I get to this one. And what's the next, the last term in my equation gonna be? What's the potential difference going from, from here to here?
This is current I2 flowing through here, and it's a four ohm resistor. That would be I2 times times R. Times, yeah. Or, times. Yep. So plus, oh. and it's plus, right? Because this is because we're going in the direction of the current. So I'm going to say plus four ohms times I2. Right? And then I'm back to where I started. So that's my closed loop. That's got to be equal to zero. Uh, Mr. Marcus. Yes. So so, so the potential difference, uh, the the fourteen volts, mm -hmm. um, that will that battery over there. So, is the potential is that are those fourteen, two are those fourteen volts or potential difference only, um, working or they're only flowing through that big loop that you just or the, yeah that big loop that we're just talking about right now. Well, does it do anything where you wrote I one? It is well not. Yeah, I mean, it's going to affect, it is, if you took this battery out or made it a different potential, uh, yeah, you would have a different amount of current flowing through this, right? It does affect that, right? But don't think of potential as, as, a, as, a, as a flow, right? The potential difference, uh, the current is a flow, right? It's basically a, you know, think of the potential as a height, right? If, you, if you're, you're, your charge is rolling down, down a hill, right? That, that, that just means that this point in the circuit is, is 14 volts or 14 feet higher than, than this point in the circuit, right? So that, that, is gonna, that is gonna have an effect on what I1 is. Um, it's hard to see with, uh, well, it's, yeah, it's really hard to see. That's why we have to use the, you know, do these junction and loop rules and, and calculate it. My, no, 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 my point was, does it affect the potential difference at where you wrote I1? Um, yes. Well, where I drew I1 here, right? Yes. This is a direct line. There's no resistor between this point here and the negative terminal here. Right? Yes. So whatever potential my negative terminal is here, you know, this side of the resistor is going to be at that potential as well. So the other side of the resistor where there's the other battery. Yeah. Will have effect on that. Um, no, I suppose it wouldn't. If I took this battery out, I don't think it would affect what the absolute potential at this point is. Okay. I think that's right. But again, poten absolute potential value, right? The value of the potential or the height, your the height, right, that the, the charge is at. Um, that's not as an that's not important really at all. It's only the change in potential, right? It's only the, the change in height going from from say here to here or from from here to here um, that has an effect. So let's see what we get. Let's see what we get. I'm going to rewrite this equation now as um, without the units. And this one's negative, right? So what I can say, so this is kind of one equation that I'm going to be using up here. This one says that 2 times I3 plus 4 times I2 equals 14, right? If I add the 14 to both sides. Do we see how this going from here to going from here to this is just kind of rewriting it. Um, and I could have left it as minus 14 equals zero as well. Um, maybe that would have been better, I don't know. But now we've got, we've got two equations. We don't have any new unknowns here, right? I3 and I2 are already our unknowns. So now we've got three equations and two unknowns. So we just need the one more equation from one more loop and then we'll be able to solve. All right. So usually ahead of time, you can't really tell what's going to be easier if, you know, we, we, we're only going to need one more loop. We can either pick top loop or bottom loop. Um, and I can't tell just by looking at it, which is going to be easier. I guess bottom loop has fewer terms in it, right? Bottom loop only has got one battery in it and two resistors rather than two batteries and two resistors. So why don't we pick bottom loop? All right, and let's see what we can get as a term for the bottom loop or as an R, our equation for the bottom loop. So I'm going to start. It doesn't really matter where I start. Um, 
why don't we start here, right, right here before the battery, and we'll go around this way, right, because that's the direction that I1 and I3 are both going. It'll save us some minus signs. All right, so we're going to go around this loop. Starting here, when I go from this negative terminal to this side of the, the battery, the positive terminal, what's my potential difference there? This is a 10 volt battery. Is it going from here to here? Do I, is it positive 10 then or is it negative 10? Uh, it's positive 10. Positive 10, right? If I go from the negative side to the positive side, I'm increasing, right? I'm going up. So I'm going to start with plus 10 volts. And then I've got this going from here to here. What's my potential uh, difference going from this side of the six ohm resistor to that side of the six ohm resistor? And we know that we're going in the same direction as, as I1, current I1. Remember, we are, we're always going to be, we're, this is going to be a very useful, this equation that everybody calls Ohm's law that's not Ohm's law. We have, we have I1 is the current, R is six ohms. So the potential difference is just six ohms times I1. And we're going in the same direction as the current, so it's positive. So we have plus six ohms times I1 there. Is that okay? Is it, it might be confusing at first. I'm, I'm not, you know, but, but it really is um, follow the rules blindly and, and, and you'll, get, you'll get the answer. Um, with Kirchhoff's rules. Are we okay with, uh, with this one? Let's see. Then I'm gonna keep going around my loop. I get here and now here's a two ohm resistor, All right? What's the, what, what, what should I put in the equation when I go from here to here? I3 times uh, R. Yeah, I3 times R, right? I3 times the two ohms. And we're going in the direction of I3, so it's positive. So I get plus two ohms times I3. And I continue on my way around the loop and I'm back to where I started. So that's my bottom loop equal to zero. So let me rewrite this one as um, six I1 plus two I three equals, now if I subtract, I got to subtract the 10 volts from both sides. So that's going to equal negative 10. Okay. So now, right now I look, remember, if, I, if the number of equations is greater than or equal to the number of unknowns, I'm ready to go ahead and solve. I've done all the physics and now it's math time, right? Because no new unknowns here. I1 and I3 are, are, are not new unknowns. So in these three equations all together, there's three unknowns, right? I1, I2, and I3. So now it's a math problem. We're done with the physics part of it. Any, any questions about how we got any of these equations or, or what we're doing here? I'm having a hard time judging whether it's uh, a little quieter than usual because you get it more or you get or because you get it less. I know my speakers are. I, I, I guess I get it. It's like, yeah, I mean, I kind of understand. Yeah. Okay. We'll do more examples, right? Once you see a few that this, this thing will kind of click. Um, We'll do some more examples, but now let's do the let's do the math, right? We're almost there. Do we know? I mean, you should, I don't know what what class in this school that you actually learned to do simultaneous equations in, right? Are, are you familiar with solving like three equations and three unknowns like this? Is that once we're at this point, is this pretty familiar to you, or is this not something that you would have done by this point in, in high school? We solve for something substituted in, solve for something substituted in. 
I've done this before. All right. Well, let's see. Let's see what we can get then. Um, well, here's one that's already solved, right? I3 equals I1 plus I2. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this one into this equation and also into this equation. And let's see what we get. All right. So let's do the math. Um, if I replace I3 here, I get 2 times replacing I3 with I1 plus I2. Right, that's that's this term. Then plus four i two equals fourteen. Okay, uh, and and when I put it into this equation, right, I get six i one plus two i three, which is just i one plus i two again, equals minus ten. Now I've got two equations and two unknowns, right? And I should, I guess, uh, the, this is this is simplifiable. Is that a word, simplifiable? So I have two i one, and then I have two i two plus four i two. Equals fourteen. And down here I have. Uh, this is 6i1 plus 2i1 is 8i1 plus 2i2. Let me know if I'm making a mistake. Equals minus 10. Where do I go from here? I've got these two equations, two unknowns. Uh you just solve for one of the variables and plug it into the other equation. Yeah, we'll solve for one of the variables and plug it into the other one. Exactly. Uh, let's see, what's the easiest way to do that from here? Sometimes I spend more time trying to figure out the easiest way to do it than I do just if I were just to pick a way and do it. I think the second one where you move the negative 10 so you get rid of that. Okay. So, yeah, you'd move the negative 10 and then swap it with I2. So swap. What are you trying to solve for? I one. Um, okay. So you, let's do that. Let's let's uh, let's solve this one for for. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. Let's solve this for I one. Um, so I would say eight I one equals negative uh, ten minus two I two, right? And then I just divide by eight. So I get I1 equals uh, 10 over 8, what's that, uh, 5 over 4? Yes, it is. So negative 5 over 4, I'm, I'll do this, I'll keep the minus sign, and then plus 1 fourth I2. All right. So now I'll plug that back into here, All right? So I get two watts. So what I get is two times I one. So two times, and there's my minus sign, two times five fourths plus one fourth I two. That's my, uh, that's my I one there. Then plus six I, Run out of ink. Two equals fourteen. And now, now this is just uh, now this is just one equation, one unknown, right? I can solve this for i two um, pretty quickly from here as long as I didn't make any mistake. Um, I get. Let's see. So the two just turns the uh, these denominators into two as well, right? So I would get. Um, So I have negative five halves minus uh, one half I two plus six I two equals 14. 
And then let's see, if I do 14 plus five halves, right? If I add that to both sides, that's 14 plus two and a half is 16 and a half. Let's do that. And then I have six I2 minus a half I2, that's five and a half I2, right? You see how I went from, from here to here. I added the, the five halves to, to both sides. And I, and I combined the negative one half with the six. So that means I two is just equal to 16 and a half over five and a half. And, and it's a positive number, which means we drew the current in the right direction originally. And that's just three. It's nice that it came out to, to a nice number. 16 and a half over five and a half is just three. So the current flowing in this branch of the circuit is three amps. All right. I'm sorry, so this, we are going, this is taking us a, a while to go through, you know, once you're, you know, just because it takes, when, when you explain something, it takes a lot longer than, than it, you know, than it normally does. But hopefully you're, you're uh, bearing with me here. Are, are we okay with that? And we, we can, we can, we're quickly gonna, gonna finish, finish this up now. Um, we know what I2 is, is three. So that means uh, yeah, let's draw more crazy arrows all over the place. Now I'm going to put this in here and I get, right, because now I want to find I1. So I say 6I1 plus oh, wait, sorry. This one, I don't know I3 yet. Oh boy. Do the other, other one first. So I'm now I'm actually putting it into here because I know what I2 is. So now I'm going to find I3. Let me get it, go on to a new piece of paper. So I'm looking at this equation and I know that two times I3 plus four times I2, that's four times three, that's 12 equals 14. Right, and stop me if you're not sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna finish this quickly, but stop me if uh, if I make a mistake or if you don't see how I get anything. Right, if two i three plus twelve is fourteen, that means two i three equals two. Right, and subtract twelve from both sides. And if two i three equals two, that just means i three equals one amp. Right. So now I can plug both of those. Now we're really almost done, right? Because I can plug both of what I know into here, right? And going from there, I know that I1, that's the only one I don't know yet, plus I2, that's the three amps, equals I3, which is one amp. So that means I1 equals negative two. And there's my three currents. That's all I know. So it turns out if I go back to the diagram, right? I know that. Um, and let me write that up, rewrite over here. I had I two equals three amps, right? I two and I three I drew in the right direction, right? So the current really is flowing this in this direction um, around the the upper branch and the lower branch. But I one I got negative two amps, so that means I one doesn't actually flow in this direction. I one flows uh, right to left. And that makes kind of sense because we've got the positive terminal of this battery here and the negative terminal of that battery there. If we had, if we had picked I1 to be to the left in the first place, we would have had a couple of different minus signs in the equation and we would have ended up with, with uh, I1 equals two amps instead of negative two amps. But either way, in the end, we're, we're sure that the current, uh, current flows to the left in that middle branch. All right. So that's Kirchhoff's rules and an example. 
Um, any any questions about that? We will do more example and more problems like this because because these are um, once this clicks, it's really it's really not too bad. And how are we doing on time? I still have no idea what what time these classes ends on the new schedule. It's not yet. I know that much. 11.15, oh, close, 10 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna stop the, stop the recording here.